Hey designers, my name is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Elementor Pro version 2.5.8 has parallax effects built it into its core version. So in this video, I'll explain each and every parallax motion effect. There are two parallax effects here. So scrolling effects and mouse effects. I'll go over each one of them and I'll show you how to tweak values and there are just various settings so as to better understand what these effects are. So these motion parallax effects are available for every section, column or widget. So you can click on this widget and you can go to advanced and under advanced you now see a field called motion effects. So there are two kinds of motion effects, scrolling effects and mouse effects. That's cool. Let me click on this column and let's go to advanced and under motion effects again you have two kinds of effects let me click on a section and go to advanced and here they've limited motion effects to scrolling effects maybe for some reason they don't want the mouse over effects for a section maybe they'll add it in the future but we'll actually study these motion effects with respect to a widget so we'll just take this widget for example and study each and every effect that it's going to apply so there are three settings under here. One is a drop down menu that specifies the direction in which this parallax should take place either up or down. So let's pick up and let's see how that looks like. And you can see the parallax effect being applied over here. And then you have speed, the rate at which this should be applied. So it will be relatively quick, you can see that can see the difference between so let's make it a bit slower and see how the parallax would look like as you can see it's gradually scrolling up then there are two values listen carefully I'll explain this clearly so viewport is nothing but the total height of the window in which this particular element is deep displaced or displayed so viewport height of this element in this particular instance is the height of this and this. So there are two points here. One is the bottom and second is the top. So we are saying that apply vertical scroll upwards with a speed of this and start from the exact bottom. That means when the element is just entering the viewport or when you're able to just see the starting of the element. So we're just saying just start it the moment element enters the viewport or the visible area of the screen if that's easy for you to understand. So the start the animation the moment element enters the visible area of the screen and then perform the animation till 50%. So you can see that the animation is applied till 50% and then after 50% there is no animation or there is no vertical scroll effect that, because those are the points that we have specified. Again you can also say apply the effect till 71% so you can see that take place here. So it will start from the exact 0% and it will be applied until and unless you scroll till 71% of the total area. So that's what the bottom and the top are. You can also say you want this to start at 31% bottom. So initially there is no effect because we have changed the starting point to 31%. So once it scrolls 31% of the total area, it starts the effect and then ends the effect at 71%. Basically that's what these two points are. These are like checkpoints or the points that specify when your animation should start from bottom. So bottom means when the element is just entering the area, that's what the bottom point specifies. So 31% means when the element just enters the area and leaves the area by 31%. And this is the end point, which means when the element reaches the top of the screen or the when the element is about to disappear till 71% perform this animation. If I extend it to 85%, you can see clearly. So it will not start from 0% because 
we said we want the animation or this particular parallax effect to start at 31 percent so till 31 percent the element is unaffected then it starts that neat little parallax effect and it will continue to apply this effect till 85 percent and at this it stops the effect because this is the starting point and this is the ending point so you can do the same thing with down so this will move the element in the opposite direction or towards the bottom so as you can see with your normal scrolling effect you can see the element going down and it will be applied till bottom 31 percent so till bottom 31 percent it will be applied and it will start at top 85 percent so it will start around here and then let's change this value to 50 and let's increase this value to 90 and let's see what happens now so technically this animation should now start when the element reaches 50 percent of the distance no animation as of here and yes it starts at 51 percent it's taking the element down 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 again till it reaches 91 percent and then it stops the animation you can also change the speed so based on the speed if you want it to be quicker you can increase the speed and it will do the same so from 51 percent to 92 percent it will perform at this speed so it will adjust the animation according to these variables so it should be five times as fast and it should complete the animation from 51 percent to 92 percent so 0 30 50 percent it's starting the animation and you can see the speed at which it's been applied so that's what it does so together with speed and these points control how and where your parallax effect should be applied okay i'll reset it to default let's take a look at horizontal scroll similar to vertical scroll you have horizontal scroll so you can specify either to the left or to the right and all the same points apply so i want the animation to start from bottom so when the element just enters the screen i want animation to start and i want to be it to be finished the moment element reaches half of the distance scrolling distance so you can see here even before the element enters the screen it has started the animation because i can see my coat moving over there so it's moving moving and at 50 percent it's done because the end point is 52 percent that we have set here so it starts at zero percent even before i can look at the element and ends at 52 percent let's switch things up so we'll say we want this animation to start at 50 percent and maybe end at 82 percent so that we can see it so now when i scroll from here there's no animation because the starting point is set to 49 percent so until it reaches 49 percent of the scrolling distance this particular element there's no effect so at 49 percent it just starts the effect and it will perform that effect till 82 percent so from 49 percent with this speed it's moving till here if you increase the speed the element will be further displaced to the left so let me show you what that means so it should start at 49 percent and end at 82 percent with this speed meaning within this time i'm actually increasing the speed so it's a bit scientific so distance is nothing but speed into time right so if you increase this and if you set this constant well the distance increases which means that this item will be displaced even further so let's see that so first let us set it to maybe two and see how much this item will be displaced when we have the same values here so just by a slight amount so it just reaches till here that's fine let's increase the speed maybe 7.2 and you can already see that the element is overlapping with this let me prove it with my scrolling so it will start at 49 percent and 
it will start displacing this element quickly. So as it starts displacing the element quickly, even before I reach the completion of the screen, it will displace the element onto the left. Well, the same thing applies to right as well. So as you can see here, it won't start at zero because the starting point is 49%. So when it reaches 49%, it starts the animation or the effect and it starts moving. And before I even reach the end of the screen, it displays the element onto the right of the screen. So that's what these are. So your speed and these checkpoints together control how your element should be displaced and what kind of effect it should apply. So that's horizontal scroll and vertical scroll. I'll reset this. Now, so the next effect is transparency. So as the name suggests, it will toggle the visibility of an element or it will increase or reduce the opacity property of this particular widget, section or a column, whatever you choose to. So it can be a bit confusing, but if you clearly understand what it is, you can clearly tweak it according to your liking. So I just want this effect to be more visible so that you'll clearly understand. So I've set the level to a maximum of 10. So you can set between 10 or one. I've set it to 10. And as I said, this will start the effect from 0%. That's what this bottom point means. And it will end the effect by 51%. So let's actually see what's going on and I've selected fade in and I'll select that and I'll see what's going on. As you can see, before the item even enters the viewport, it starts fading in. Fade in is basically revealing the element to the user. So as you scroll, it will be gradually revealed to you and at 51%, it completes the whole effect. After 51%, you're free to scroll and there's no effect. And when you scroll down, it's basically following these bottom and top, respecting these two properties. And when you scroll down again, that effect is applied in reverse. So this is the natural flow. And at 0%, it starts fading in, meaning it's actually revealing the element. And at 51%, it completes revealing the element. Let's switch these toggles and let's see what will happen to our element. As you can see, when I moved the bottom slider to 52%, the element is completely gone. Well, what does that mean? As I told you, fade in is revealing an element. And in order to reveal the element, it should hide the element first. So I'm saying that the effect should start from 52%. So it should start revealing the element from 52%. So before 52%, the element is completely hidden because it wants to reveal from 52%. So at 0%, I can't see the element. At 30 or 40, I can't see the element. And at 52%, it starts revealing the element with maximum level. And at 90%, the element is completely visible. That's what it does. So fade in is to reveal the element and based on the checkpoints you apply here. So if I say start revealing the element at 0% and finish it at 90%, it will hide the element the moment you it's about to enter the visible area. And as you scroll through it, it will gradually reveal the element. And at 90% or so, it will completely show the element. If I change this toggle to 51%, it will start the effect at 0%, which means it will hide the element or set the opacity to 0 at 0% or even when the element starts entering the visible area and as the element enters, it starts the effect and it will finish the effect by 51%. As fade in is a reveal effect by 51%, I can clearly see my effect. And if I switch these toggles, before it will start the effect at 51%. So it will start revealing the effect at 51%. So before 51%, I cannot see my element because the opacity is set to zero. Or at 15%, it will start the effect, which means before 15%, the element is completely hidden. And at 15%, it starts showing the element. You can also switch this 
to maybe a 30% or something. So it'll have that subtle effect. So as it starts, slowly becomes visible and at 44% I can completely see the element. So play with these values and adjust the level and you'll achieve the effect you have. Similarly, fade out is opposite of fade in. Fade out will actually hide the element. Fade in will reveal the element, meaning it will start increasing the opacity, whereas fade out will start reducing the opacity. That's what it means. So I chose fade out here. And if I put this point here, 0%, it will start the effect at 0%. As I told you, fade out is to hide an element or to reduce the opacity. So at 0%, it will start reducing my opacity. And the moment element reaches 44%, it completely hides my element and it finishes the effect. As there is no other effect after 44%, the element will remain visible. Sorry, invisible after 44%. I don't want this. So for fade out, I want the effect to start at 50% so that I can see the element from 50 till 50% so I can see the element from 50% and the effect will start taking place from 53% it will start gradually fading out from the viewport and I'll have that nice little effect. So that's what it means. Again, if you change these values, you'll know what happens. So it will start the effect at 0% meaning it will start hiding the effect or sorry it will start hiding the element from 0% and by the moment the element reaches 56% the element would have been completely hidden that's what is happening here so you don't want that you want the element to be hidden when the user scrolls away from it so at 50% you want to show the element maybe after 50% you want to start this particular effect so that you'll have this nice little fading out effect. So that's what fade out means. Fade in is to reveal an effect. Fade out is to hide the effect or hide or actually reduce opacity. So fade in will increase your opacity. Fade out will reduce your opacity and use these checkpoints wisely so that you'll get the effect that you desire. Now let's take a look at fade out in. Why do we even need fade out in and fade in out well as you can see if i have set my checkpoints from 0% to 53% the moment the element reaches 53% it's completely hidden because the property or the opacity is changed to 0 at 53% well what if i want to show the element again after it scrolls off so for that so this is actually changing the element's opacity permanently what if i want to reveal the element again after hiding the element so that's where fade out in kicks in so it's like two effects in one so fade out first and then fade in that's what it means so first you'll apply fade out and then you'll apply fade in fade out in means so let me change these checkpoints and as i told you fade out in means fade out first and then fade in so based on the checkpoints it'll apply these two animations so the first animation will occur between these checkpoints and the second animation will occur after these checkpoints. So what I'm actually saying is that fade out the element from 0% to 17% or 15%. It means from the bottom, the moment the element enters the screen, start fading out, which means hide the element or reduce the opacity and at 15% start showing the element and the level is set to 10 this is like speed so if you reduce it the element will be properly shown quickly so you can adjust the level of opacity so based on the level it will take some time to reveal the element if you set it to maximum it will take quite some time because it actually reduced the element by 10 times or it reduced the element's opacity by 10 times which is why it's taking a lot of time to reveal the element in fact it's taking till 90 percent or 99 percent to reveal the element properly because we've applied the effect by a strength of 10 if you reduce the level it will be shown at 50 percent or something so it'll 
start fade out effect at 0%. You can see that it's very minute and then it starts showing in the effect. That's it. Then you can see the element. If you increase this a bit and let me tweak this value a bit. So I'm saying, so from 0% start fading out and after 36 or 37% start fading in, which means after 37% start revealing the element so let's see that by this level or this strength so from zero percent the element opacity will be reduced and at 37 percent you can see it's reduced here at 37 percent it's reduced and after that it fades in meaning it will start revealing the element or increasing the opacity gradually by a strength of 5 so at this point maybe around 70% or 65% it will properly show the element so you better tweak the values whenever you add fade in fade out in or fade in out for these two animations always have small intervals so as these effects are going to permanently affect the way your element looks Make sure that you add a small interval of fx based on the strength. So by a level of 10, I want the effect to kick in from 13%. So first I want to fade out the moment element, the element enters 13%. So it starts fading out or hiding the element. And at 13 or at 33%, it starts showing the element or fading in and it gradually reveals the element as it scrolls some distance or you can also do like this so you can use fade out in so the fading out animation will start from 53% and they can end it with a fade in maybe around 86% let's see how that effect would look like so initially there will be no animation sorry initially there as I told, it's fade out from 53%. Actually, fade out means hiding the element. It starts hiding the element at 53% till it reaches 86%. And at 86%, it starts showing the element, but it will have no effect as the element is almost gone. So you want to keep these intervals short. So you can have something like this and then see the effect take place. Let's see how these settings will affect it. So it's starting the effect at 36%. At, I think this is around 36%. It's hiding the element till 65%. This is 50, 65 and then it starts revealing the element. Even this won't have any. I want this a bit early so that I can clearly see the element when I actually want to see it. So from 14% even this is bad. So I can actually start the effect from 0% or the fade out effect from 0% to 35% and then I can have a fade in from this percentage. I'll actually do this. So let's see how that would look like. So from 0% it will start fading out effect which will hide it you won't even notice it because it's 19 percent and you can see there's no element in here and then after 19 percent it will start fade in or sh reveal the element by this amount and at some point you can clearly see the element so that's what fade out in means and fade in out is quite opposite of it so fade in out will actually reveal the element first and then hide the element so here I'm saying from 0% to 50% I want fade in animation and after 51% fade out will be applied. So let's see how that would look like. As I told you in order to reveal it should hide the element first. So it will you cannot see it because it has hidden element before 0% and it starts showing it. So let's switch these toggles a bit. Maybe it will be clear to you now. 
So let's see what this does. So at 50%, I'm starting my fade in animation. So as I told you, fade in will reveal the element. In order to reveal the element, you should hide it first. So before the effect starts, the element is kind of hidden. And at 53%, the element gets revealed. And at 91%, it'll start fading out. You can see that neat little effect. Anyway, let me change this to 72% and see how that would look like. So it'll be hidden. Before 53%. It'll start showing the element, which is the fade in effect. Till 72%. And then it'll start hiding the element from 72%. So fade in and fade in out are basically two animations in one. So that's transparency. I'll reset this. Now let's go to blur. Again, we have the same level of settings. So fade in will actually reveal the element. Let me increase the blur level to the maximum. So from 0% to 40%, I want the effect to be completed. So it be, it will be blurred between zero to 43%. And at 43%, you can clearly see the element. That's when the element exactly enters the screen. If I switch these toggles, you can see that at 53%, the effect will take place, meaning it will start revealing the element from 53%. So before that, it will blur the element. So that's what is happening in here. So can't see the element because before 53%, it will actually blur the element so that it can unblur the element once it passes that 53% checkpoint and it starts revealing the element and till it will do that till 100%. That's because that's what we've set here. So let's switch these toggles a bit and see what happens. So the effect will actually kick in from 53%. So before 53%, it will be a total blur. Let me reduce the size of this, maybe at, let's see how that would look like. So that will start revealing from 14% till it reaches 73%. So I'll just reduce this to 50%. So the, by the moment, user can focus on this. It will be unblurred and the user can clearly see it. Again, you can play with the levels based on how strong or how lighter you want this effect to be. Fade out is again the same. Fade in reveals the element. Fade out will hide the element. So it will start hiding the element from 14%. And when it reaches 14%, the element would be completely hidden. In this case, it's a blur animation or blur effect. So it's completely blurred when it reaches 14% and you cannot see the element again. So for these kinds, you want the blur to start at 50% so that user can see it when he needs to see it. And when he's scrolling away, there'll be a sense of disappearance. So that's what it's going on in here. And again, fade out in and fade in out does what I've explained. Fade out first before the checkpoints. And once the checkpoints are completed, start fading in with the level that's specified in here. That's what these are. And next we have rotate. It's quite simple. You can pick the direction and the amount by which it should be rotated and the checkpoints. So when you want the rotation to start, if you pick this, So the rotation will start at 8% with the speed and as you scroll through the element will be revealed and it starts rotating again. So you can limit this to 50%, 56%, maybe after 56% the effect will be completed and there won't be any other effect. But if you increase this it will perform the rightward rotation like a clock 
till the amount that you specify. So it will rotate till 76%. You can also increase the speed. So you can see how fast that element is being rotated. You can also move these points in here. So it will apply this till 40%. You can also change the direction and that's what it does. So you can set it to default. And again, you have another thing called scale. This is again similar to blur transparency. You have four options. So like I said, it will scale up by the amount that you specify in here. So what's happened in here? So it started scaling up from 19% and by the time the element reaches half of the screen, it's totally scaled up and it became three times bigger. I don't want this. I want the element to be scaled up when he's, when it's being scrolled away or when I'm actually moving away from the element. So the checkpoint I want to have for these are from 52%. So the effect will start taking place at 54%. It will start scaling up, 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 and till 100%, it will start scaling the element. So if I increase the strength, you can clearly see that. So from 54%, with a strength of 10, I'll start increasing the element, scaling it up, so that it's more prominent. Let me change the checkpoint to zero and this checkpoint to 52 percent so it started scaling up from zero percent and by the time 50 percent checkpoint is reached it totally scaled up my element by 10 times so for scaling up you might want to use a value between 50 to 100 because that's more practical anyway it's all up to you so you decide what you want anyway this is scale up and then scale down we'll do the opposite So again, in order to scale down, it needs to be scaled up first, quite logical, similar to fade in and fade out. So in order to be shown, it needs to be hidden. In order to be scaled down, it needs to be scaled up. So that's what it's doing. So okay, let me clear the transparency here. So by the moment or by the time I reach this 50% viewport my element is scaled by 10 times and as I scroll through it's scaled down. I don't want this effect. I actually want it to be scaled down from the starting point and then when it reaches the viewport and when I clear, when I can clearly see the element, I want it to be scaled down like this one. So it's more like bringing attention to the text rather than distracting it. So for scale down, you want to use a value between 0 to 50 percent that's all up to you you can also use it as a, whenever you want but it's better to use a value between 0 to 53 percent so that when you reach half of the viewport on when the element reaches half of the viewport you can clearly see the element this is its natural position when the user would generally read it you can also finish the animation a bit quicker by changing this checkpoint so by 39 percent it would have scaled down my element and there's no other animation after this like i said fade in out first it will scale down and then it will start scaling up so it will start scaling down from zero percent so let's see what's what it's doing and then it starts scaling up after 58%. Again, let's switch this up. So it actually started scaling up first. So at 0%, it started scaling up. And after 58%, it will start scaling down. So for this, you would use a value like this. Or maybe so here's a simple trick that you need to follow. So just scroll the element to
to its natural position where your user would view it and then adjust this toggle so that you'll understand when to apply the animation. If you're adjusting this toggle and it's not making much of a difference, simple, simply leave this toggle and try playing with this toggle. Just like that. And you can also adjust the speed so that it'll, you can also scale it in the negative direction. So when you do that, it'll actually scale by this factor. It'll actually reduce the sh size or it'll shrink. So when I say scale up by minus three, it's actually shrinking the size by minus three. So it'll start the effect at zero percent, start shrinking, shrinking. And by the time it reaches 20 percent, it's the text is really small and it's actually shrinked by three times. That's what I've specified here and change this. So start shrinking, start shrinking and by 85% it completes shrinking the size of the text. That's what it means. So that's scale animation for you. And again, you can choose to show it on desktop, tablet or mobile. Okay. Now that we're more than happy with scrolling effects, I'll turn this off and then we'll look at our mouse effects. These are quite simple. You either choose to animate the element or toggle it based on your mouse movement. Let's take an image for example so that it will be clear for us to see or we'll take this column for example. So I'll just click on this column under advanced. I go to motion FX, click on mouse FX, I'll click on mouse track and now you can see when I move over this on hover over this column, you can see how it moves. I've selected the direction to be opposite. So when I move in the opposite direction or the element moves in the opposite direction of my cursor movement. So if I'm going towards it, it will try to leave from me and I'm trying to go away. So direct, it will just track your mouse movement. So it will go in the direction that you move your mouse or your cursor in and you can adjust the speed. See that. And then 3D tilt is this little parallax effect. It looks really slick and I'm really a huge fan of this. You can also do opposite tracking so it moves in the opposite direction. Kind of like an alternate way and it adds that neat little card like effect, floating card type of effect on this. And you can also adjust the speed. So I'll click this. Finally, Here's a fun tip. So as you know, I've selected the mouse track effect for this column and these are all CSS effects or CSS transforms. So when I copy this effect and paste it or paste the style to this column, you can see that even this column inherits the property of this column, which means this is a purely CSS feature. All the parallax effects that you see are basically CSS features and they're really neatly done. They're transforms in disguise, they're responsive, they're smooth and as far as I know, they won't affect your scrolling effect except they need to load tiny little library to perform this. It won't have any noticeable effect on your performance. So these are even optimized for performance as well. Actually, they're better than getting a third party add on because third party add ons can never match that optimization. I'll clear this out and that's it. So those are your parallax FX that you're going to see in Elementor version 2.5.8. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll talk to you real soon. Goodbye. And that's it for now. And hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. I'm ready to help you. Catch you in the next video. Peace.